Howdy, it's Kyle, talking about the rise in content that claims Americans are stupid. Over the past several months, I've noticed quite a few videos going up talking about how Americans don't know geography, we don't respect other cultures, and when we travel abroad, we demand everyone else speaks English kind of stuff. And I'm not some chest-thumping American that thinks we're the best at everything, but so many of these complaints about us not knowing geography are coming from people that don't know geography themselves, and many of the things they're complaining about, they wouldn't be complaining about if they actually understood the geography of the U.S. and the world in general. And I'm not looking for any type of drama. I'm not going to call out any individual channels or videos, but just the general concept of these videos that have been going up. And there are five big complaints that people make about Americans, and I'm going to leave a timestamp and I'll address each one of those five. The first is that Americans don't know geography. The second is that Americans only speak one language. The third is that Americans don't travel abroad. And if we do, it's the fourth. We don't respect other cultures. Or fifth, it's that many white Americans pretend to be the nationality of their European ancestors. So I'm going to address each of these five complaints to see if they really are true. So the first thing I want to address is the belief that Americans don't know geography. You may have seen some of these videos done by big productions like Jimmy Kimmel or back in the day it was Jay Leno or it just might be YouTubers where they ask Americans basic questions about geography and they often come up with just really stupid answers. But let me tell you a little trade secret. It's called editing. I actually do videos like this myself where I set up a camera and I ask people on the street just questions about geography. But how it works in reality is that most of the people that you ask will know some questions and not know some others. And it makes for fairly boring content. Nobody wants to see people get some right and some wrong. They want to see people get all of them wrong in a very stupid manner. Although I will say most Americans don't have a large knowledge of world geography, but I don't think most people on Earth have much knowledge of world geography. I 100% assure you I could go to any city in Europe and set up a camera and ask questions on the street about basic geography and come up with enough content to make people just look really stupid. So Americans not knowing geography I think is a valid complaint, but I don't think that's something that's just unique to Americans. But I will be in Europe shortly, and I will have my camera with me, so I'll test out this hypothesis. The next complaint about Americans I want to discuss is that we only speak one language. And I think a good way to analyze this would be to go to a mapping website such as the one I'm on right here and take a look at map scale and map distortion. So this website's called the truesizeof.com, and it's where you can just take a look at a polygon shape of a country and overlay it somewhere else to not have to deal with map distortion. So I'm going to go to the U.S. contiguous 48 and it brings up a polygon of the country and you can move it around the world and depending on the latitude it will adjust its size. So I'm going to go over to Europe because Europeans are the ones that complain the most about Americans and this kind of stuff and just kind of show the size of the contiguous U.S. relative to most of Europe here. So it's just so much bigger. I think because Europeans have been using the Mercator projection for centuries, they kind of have an inflated idea of how big the area of Europe is and how small uh, areas that are more lower latitude are. So when you see just how big the U.S. is compared to Europe, this map alone should explain why so many Americans only speak one language. And first of all, a lot of Americans are bilingual. About 70 million or 23% of the population are bilingual, but that does still mean that 77% do only speak one language, primarily English. But again, this map should basically show you why that is without even having to explain it, but I still will explain it. If you were able to travel from, say, London to Athens to Moscow to Stockholm to Paris to Prague to, you know, down to Yerevan and only have to speak one language, and you probably would. It's not like Europeans are better people because they speak more languages. They have to speak more languages as a necessity. For example, take a look at the Netherlands here. The Netherlands is this, a couple of these, and this. And that's all there is. So if people from the Netherlands want to see something else, they have to go to another country somewhere that's going to speak another language. So there's more of a necessity to speak other languages. And the countries in Europe are so small And the next door country is probably speaking a different language. It's a necessity, not some superiority factor. So so here's a map of the U.S. with a state highlighted. It doesn't matter what state this is, but pretend all the states are individual countries and each one speaks a different language. So if the people from this state or this country wanted to go to the north and they had to speak German or to the east had to speak Spanish, 
to the South Dutch or whatever, the people that live in this country would speak multiple languages because they would have to. But if they can travel for a couple of thousand kilometers and not have to speak any other language than English, then why would they speak other languages? So I'll use another country for an example. This is Canada. It's a big island that we call a continent to make the people that live there feel better about themselves. Do you think the people that live here can speak a bunch of languages? Of course not, because they can travel from Sydney to Perth to Brisbane to Hobart to Darwin to the prominently displayed New Zealand and only have to speak one language. They'll often go to Bali or other tropical resorts in Southeastern Asia where most of the people that work in the tourism industry speak English. So when you live in a big place where it's just one language being spoken, you're probably not going to speak a bunch of other languages. And something to go along with that is that people will often complain how Americans will be in a non-English speaking country and ask if that person they're speaking to speaks English. And I can see how that would be frustrating, but at the same time, so many people in non-English speaking countries still do speak English. And there are so many schools in so many countries teaching English. It's almost a de facto second language for so many countries in the world. And when you can travel to so many non-English speaking countries and find a lot of people that do speak English, you're going to get people that ask, do you speak English? So yes, most Americans do only speak English, but at least understand why just through a basic looking at a map like this. But that brings me to the third complaint often made about Americans is that we don't travel abroad very much. And at the most recent estimate, about 40% of Americans have a passport where it's well over 50% for Canadians or Europeans. And I went ahead and left this map up on the screen because this same map will explain the same reasons why we only speak one language for the most part. Just look at how far we can go without having to leave the country. And again, I'll just move this around. I mean, just the, the variety in the landscapes, the geography, just the things that we can see without having to travel very far is just much greater than what you have in any of these European countries. But that's not the only reason. That's just one of the of the few reasons the second reason why so many more europeans have a passport than americans i'll back up a little bit look at this you could fit an entire u.s across the atlantic whereas you guys in europe the same distance you could be in morocco tunisia egypt turkey you could be in places that are exotic Whereas we're still flying over the Western Atlantic, and if we're coming from the middle of the U.S., we're barely still over the U.S. by the time you guys are looking at the pyramids at Giza in person. So it's much, much easier for Europeans to travel. It's so much easier. You have so many places that are so much closer. And again, just look at a map to understand. I mean, we were in Tangier, Morocco, right around here. There are people from Spain coming over there for a day trip. People from Italy were coming over there, coming down there for a weekend. People from France coming down there for a weekend. Meanwhile, my wife and I, I was like, I had to plan for a year, save up forever for a big trip. It's a huge deal for us. We don't have all these exotic options of places to travel to. I mean, you can get to Senegal. I was in Senegal recently down here. You can get there from France to five-hour flight. Look at that. We're still halfway over the Atlantic. There's so many more options for Europeans to travel to because you have so much more land over here. We have all this water over here. It, this a significant greater hassle for us to travel. So much more expensive. A flight across the Atlantic is a lot cheaper than a, than a flight down the Mediterranean. So hate to break that one to you. So it's just so much easier for Europeans to travel, but that's not the only thing. It's also this thing called latitude. Europe gets really cold during the winter, right? Canada gets really cold during the winter. Well, what do they often do in December, January, February? They go down to the tropics. They go down to these places in the lower latitudes, which are in different countries because it gets really cold where they live. We don't have to do that. Many Americans do go to Mexico or the Caribbean. We've been to both, but we don't have to. We can go to Florida, Texas, California, Arizona. We have places within the borders of our country to escape the cold, where if you want to escape the cold from where it gets really cold, you got to have this thing called a passport and travel far. And I mean, I, it's crazy. I have to really explain this, but so many people, I think, lose track of map scale and just how far things are. 
and just how much of an ordeal it is for Americans to travel far away places because again, it's expensive. It's a flight from the east east coast of the U.S. New York to Dakar was like fifteen hundred bucks. That's just New York to Dakar. If it was middle across the U.S. or to farther to say Cairo, it's going to cost two thousand, three thousand dollars for the flight alone, and it's going to be at least a week, two week major trip trip of a lifetime type of thing. You're from Italy, you can fly down there for a few hundred bucks, just go for the weekend. You know, it's, I don't know, it, map scale is a real thing. Just kind of look at a map and just understand how distances are and just how the U.S. is just a much bigger land mass than you might think it is. And we do travel, it's just that we don't often travel or as often travel to foreign countries because look at how much we can see without having to leave the country. Look at that. Florida's down there in Baghdad. We can go from London to Baghdad, still be in the same country. Come on, man. Look at this. Maine is over there in West. Look at all of New England up here is in Kazakhstan. I mean, come on, man. We can travel so far without leaving the borders, without having to speak any language other than English. That's why we tend to only speak one language and often don't travel outside of our borders. Okay, the next complaint is that Americans don't respect other cultures. So when we do travel abroad, we're not going to respect other cultures, whether it be we ask people to speak English or just do really stupid things. But in my experience in traveling in Europe and Africa, it's quite the opposite. I find European tourists to be the ones that are not very respective of the cultures and ones more likely to do really cringy things. So when we were in Morocco, we would see white people wearing a Middle Eastern kaftan and a fez. And we see these people walking by, my wife and I are like, oh, please don't be American, please don't be American. And they were Spanish. Oftentimes they were Italian or French. Uh, we were in, uh, or I was in Senegal recently and there was a British family, white British family walking around in dashikis. I'm like, come on, man, you can't be wearing a dashiki. I mean, American wouldn't be going to Africa, a white American at least wouldn't go to Africa and wear a dashiki. I mean. I don't know. And also when I was in the Gambia, it's a Muslim country. And so I'm, I'm wearing long pants like you're supposed to, as a guy is supposed to wear. You would have these Dutch tourists down there in tank tops and shorts, women wearing booty shorts. I mean, come on, man. If you're going to go down to a Muslim country, at least respect the culture of the place. And if you don't want to wear pants, long pants and a long sleeve t-shirt or whatever, then don't go down there. I mean, it's, don't go down there wear tank top and shorts while the Americans are wearing long pants and complain that Americans don't respect the other cultures. I, mean, I think it's really quite the opposite. I think the type of Americans that are going to go very far, you know, again, it's a big deal for us to travel. So the type of Americans that are going to go really far overseas are much more likely to respect those cultures. Where I've been in the Caribbean, tropical kind of resort places where a lot of the European tours really talk down to the, the service staff and the, you know, the people at the hotels and restaurants. I mean, Americans aren't likely to do that. And I don't know, I just think that the concept of Americans not respecting other cultures, and it might very well be true, but I've seen it much worse coming from many of the European tourists, especially the French and Dutch. And the last complaint about Americans that you'll often hear is that many white Americans pretend they're the nationality of their European ancestors. So you'll have people saying, you know, I'm German or I'm Irish or Italian or whatever, even though they're a third or fourth or 10th generation American born here in the U.S. Now, I can totally understand why Europeans might roll their eyes or see it to be kind of cringy when an American whose families have been in the U.S. for a couple hundred years are still claiming their European ancestry. Europeans will often be quick to point out how the U.S. doesn't have anywhere near as long of history as most European countries, and that is true. That's a huge part of U.S. history is your heritage, where you came from, because everybody came from somewhere else. You don't have that same thing in Germany or Greece where your family's been there for a thousand years or more. Now, with all that being said, I also find it a little cringy when so many of these white Americans profess their European ancestry, but at least you understand why so many people are proud of their ancestry. So now I want to ask a question to Europeans. If somebody from Turkey or Algeria moves to Germany or France, are they German or French or are they still Turkish or Algerian? And say the children of those Turkish or Algerian immigrants are born within Germany and France. Are their kids French and German or are they still Turkish and Algerian? And how many generations would a Turkish family have to be in Sweden before they're considered Swedish? 
But ultimately, it comes down to geography. Again, just looking at these maps, it gives you a better idea of just how things really are in terms of shape and size instead of looking at a global map but a Mercator projection. So you can really just learn so much more about a place by learning about the geography. And so many of the complaints about Americans are due to lack of understanding of geography. So I don't expect people to know about the geography of the U.S., but if you're going to complain about Americans, you should at least know something about it first. So that's my take on some of these Americans are stupid type videos that are pretty popular right now. And I know there'll be plenty of but but comments. And I know that I don't represent the average American in terms of geography knowledge. But if you really want to learn a lot more about the people and the culture of a country, you have to learn about the geography of it, the underlying geography of it in the first place. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thank Thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Ryan C. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page with the link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.